Good day, everyone. This is Vivi and I'm Tatiana Thompson. It's strange that American goldfinches wait for so long to start their breeding season. I mean, all the other birds are already done and all their young are already trained and eating at the bird feeders. But there is a good explanation for that. You see, American goldfinches are all about thistle. They like to eat it and they also use it to build their nests. This is how they do it. Basically, they find a plant, a thistle plant. Right now, you, they're producing flowers, but as soon as thistle starts producing this kind of um, cotton-like fluff, that's when goldfinches come, pick it up, and use it to build their nests. So one of the things to do is to let thistle grow like this. We actually leave a huge chunk of our property just like this, wild. Um, there are a couple of other things that I will mention to you, but I have to take you somewhere else, so let's go. Oh, there we go, it's all started. Uh, when we bought our property, we discovered this patch where lots of milkweed grew. So, of course, we just left it alone like this because we want to make sure monarch butterflies have plants to lay their eggs on. But also, goldfinches like to come and pick up this cotton-like fluff that these plants will be producing in about a week or so to build their nests with. So, right now, you can see there are these pods, they will go grow bigger and then they will have this cotton-like really beautiful light fluff that goldfinches will come and pick and use to build the nest. So here are some of the things you can do to attract goldfinches to your property, but also to make sure that they have something to build their nest out of thistle, milkweed and if you don't have a big backyard or you can't really leave your backyard to be like this like ours you can also find natural wool and you can just leave it out somewhere in your backyard goldfinches will find it have a look at this picture that Lise Halloran sent to us and that is why goldfinches wait for so long to start breeding Hi David, this week we have a rather poetic question for you. It comes from Dale Nab, who lives in Michigan. Here's what he writes. Growing up on a farm in southeast Michigan, my grandfather always made sure the granary doors were open by May 1st, since the barn swallows came every year by May 5th. And he always cautioned, a granary without nesting swallows will surely be struck by lightning. Grandpa is gone, but his son, my father, is still here at 96. The swallows still come this year, May 1st, and the granary at 150 has still never been struck by lightning. When mowing the three acres surrounding the granary, the swallows follow the tractor and seem to enjoy swooping as close as they can as I mow. Are they having fun, warning us off, or picking up insects dislodged by the mower? Swallows at the country club do the same thing to us as we walk down the fairway, which would seem to support just having fun. What do you think? Hi, Dale. Nice to hear that your granary has not been struck by lightning in 150 years. I tried to find a reference to the scientific basis for that particular saying, but I was unsuccessful. Somehow I doubt that the presence of nesting swallows is responsible. But about those swallows following your tractor when mowing the field, I'm fairly certain they're mainly doing so to feed upon the tons of insects being flushed by the machine. I also feel the same about those golfers that are marching down the fairway. But if you're walking right near a swallow nest with babies in them, that might be a different story. They can get quite aggressive toward any living thing approaching their nests, including humans. Having said all that, barn swallows and their cousins do have a playful nature. They particularly love playing the feather game, whereupon a single feather is carried and then dropped only to be immediately grabbed by another swooping bird. Sometimes the feather can change hands several times before it reaches the barn. Another favorite game is follow the leader, whereupon a dozen or so birds fly a kind of figure eight around a building. Some birds just fly for the sheer joy of it, and swallows are likely near the top of that list. I 
personally don't like zoos and I know that a lot of them have really bad reputations. However, I do have to remind myself that originally a lot of zoos were started to protect species, not just for pure entertainment. For example, in the 80s, a couple of zoos in Chicago started a captive breeding programs for two birds, the Guam Kingfisher and the Guam Rail. These birds became completely extinct in the wild. For the past 30 years, they've been releasing birds into the wild. Their populations are growing. They're not back to their original numbers, but they're getting there slowly but surely. Despite all the conflicts in Israel, there always seems to be something interesting happening there, and this story is no exception. The Israeli Wildlife Hospital has just opened a blood bank specifically for birds. The goal is to be able to give transfusions to injured and exhausted birds. The hospital is now collecting blood samples of every bird it treats, so that way they can start a database of different blood types. The first successful transfusion was on a common buzzard that was then released released into the wild. Even though we're just at the end of July, believe it or not, some birds have already started their migration back to their wintering grounds. Last year, I told you about Turkish officials catching a northern bald ibises to prevent them from flying over Syria on their annual migration. Because of the war in Syria, a lot of birds get killed there. So last year, Turkish researchers started an initiative to capture northern bald ibises and keep them in Turkey to protect them. Well, this year, the round up has already started and the goal is to capture at least 200 northern bald ibises. If you like raptors, Holiday Beach, Ontario is the place for you. With over 100,000 hawks migrating through that area annually, this is one of the top hawk spotting places in North America. This event will take place over two weekends in September. Check it out. Wow, we received pictures of some exotic birds. It was really interesting looking at all of them. We actually have a new photo gallery on our website, so it's a lot easier to browse through all the pictures right now. Go check it out, it's under photos. And let's have a look at the top six actually this week. And the winner is, I'm sure she's going to be really thrilled, is Kat Foster with her picture of the Desert Cardinal or Periloxia. What a tough name to pronounce. Kat, we're sending you a squirrel busted peanut. This feeder is always busy and liked by many birds. Enjoy it. Goodbye for now. See you next week.